Family, in this video right here, we're about to be going over some new evidence that's been revealed that shows how Corey Gamble actually helped Diddy take away the life of Kim Porter. Now, Kim Porter is Diddy's ex-wife, the father of most of his children, and she was coming out with a book years ago, basically exposing everything that Diddy does, you know, when it comes to laying hands on women and just his very controlling and psychotic behavior. He didn't want that to get out. Now, a lot of people are speculating that he had ended up actually taking her life because this all happened at the same exact moment. Book is being be about to be released, and she just somehow ends up dead. You get what I'm saying? So it's not far-fetched. You just have to think to yourself, how far is this individual willing to go to protect his image? All right, and now Corey Gamble has been exposed as being a CIA by Kanye West. Let me just show you guys this clip really quick. Yes, Corey is CIA. Like, he didn't even have to say it. I know it. So that's Kanye West of leaked footage of him talking about how Corey Gamble is a CIA. So now, that's what makes things just become a little bit more believable because now if Diddy decides to work with the CIA to take out his ex-wife so his image doesn't get, you know, absolutely battered by exposing what he actually does, it would be smart to actually choose someone that is a part of the CIA because their repercussions would be definitely limited. If anything, they could get away with a lot of things. So let's see what this video has to say and what evidence they bring to the table. Corey Gamble. Corey Gamble is surrounded by so oh, much controversy. Isn't he Chris Jenner's boyfriend now? This man looked like he has a boyfriend. Controversy and mystery? I think we should go back to the very beginning because truly, who is Corey Gamble and how did he become so closely associated with figures such as Jeff Bezos, the Kardashian? How am I just now finding out? that not only was Corey Gamble extremely close to Kim Porter and Diddy, he was there. He was there when the coroners arrived to Kim Porter's house. Corey Gamble's not just your average guy. He's been linked to everyone from Diddy to Beyonce and even Prince Harry. Seriously, this dude's like the ultimate Hollywood insider. But That's here's weird. where it gets wild. Corey's not just hanging out with the stars. He might actually be their handler. Yeah, you heard me right. Rumor has it these handlers have ties to government agencies and they're tasked with keeping the celebs in line. And corey has been rubbing elbows with Diddy for years. He was even one of the first people on the scene when Diddy's ex Kim Porter passed away. And get this, Diddy allegedly wired Kim's entire home with audio and video surveillance. This is in the deep dive, but Kim Porter, when she passed away, there was obviously discrepancies in police reports versus coroner reports. Another thing we know for a fact is P. Diddy had her entire home wired with um, audio listening devices and video That's cameras. insanity, bro. Was her passing caught on camera? Does bro, Diddy have- people make memes out of that. Like, you know, like when you going crazy over the dude you talk to, so you want to know his every move. Like, bro, that dude, Diddy was actually living that meme out for real. ...of Kim Porter passing away. I have- so did he have anything to do with her death? So what's Corey's deal? Well, some say he's not just dating Kris Jenner for fun. He might be playing a much bigger role behind the scenes. Think about it. Why would he bother with being a handler when he's already dating one of- Bro, Corey Gamble does not like this girl right here. He likes men. It's obvious. He do, he's, not run, he's not even turning his body towards her. Look at the way he's standing. He don't want her. It's all staged, bro. The most powerful women in Hollywood. It's all starting to make sense now. Corey's not just a boyfriend. He's a key player in the Hollywood game. Corey, born November 10th, 1980 in Atlanta, Georgia, spent his early years in the heart of the ATL. He was the guy who could juggle being the football team captain at Westlake High School while acing his grades, earning himself the nickname Mr. Dependable. Seriously, he was like the MVP of multitasking. After high school, he took his talents to Morehouse College, where he bagged a business degree. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. He had a stint dating Sherry Buchanan, ex-wife of NFL player Ray Buchanan. Their breakup? Let's just say it wasn't exactly an amicable split with restraining orders and all. But what's intriguing Man. is Corey's taste in women, older women to be exact. Sherry's about a decade older than him, and fast forward to today, he's hooked up with Kris Jenner, who's a whopping 25 years his senior. Now let's tackle the juicy gossip. Rumor has it that Corey might have had a gig in the adult film industry back in the day. Yeah, you heard that right. Anyway, 
Broadway in the mid to late 2000s. Corey ditched Atlanta for sunny California, where he started making moves in Los Angeles. And boy, did he make some power moves. Let's talk connections. Corey's tight with P. Diddy, like really tight. They go way back, although the exact origin of their bromance remains a mystery. Some say it might have started through Fonsworth Bentley, Diddy's right-hand man, who coincidentally was at Morehouse College at the same time as Corey. Corey's basically Uncle Corey to Diddy's kids, and he was even there when tragedy struck, helping out during tough times like when Kim Porter passed away. It's more than just friendship, it's family. Oh, and did I mention Corey's also BFFs with Ludacris, Shaq, and Michael Jordan? Yeah, he rolls with the big leagues, private jets, VIP parties, you name it, he's there. Now about Corey Gamble's star-studded friendships and career moves. Let's start with the NBA legend himself, Michael Jordan. Corey's Insta feed is practically a shrine to MJ, with pics of him courtside, chilling with the goat. Yep, Corey was part of Jordan's inner circle, jet setting on his private plane and soaking in the basketball greatness. Now here's where things get even more interesting. Corey's got ties to Ashton Kutcher, who's tight with P. Diddy, enter producer Rob Wise, the mastermind behind Ashton's hit show, Punk. These connections paved the way for Corey to dive into the Kardashian scene. But before the Kardashian era, Corey buddied up with Scooter Braun around 2011. Their bromance not only boosted Corey's music industry cred, but also landed him a gig. Hey, look, I know I'm light skinned. But shoot me down if you ever see me, see me making this type of light skin face right here. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I ever done that right there. Look at Justin. You even got the dark skins doing the light skin. All right, let me continue, man. 2011. Their bromance not only boosted Corey's music industry cred, but also landed him a gig as co-manager of Justin Bieber. Yep, Corey was in the mix way before Bieber fever hit its peak. But wait, there's more. Corey had a hand in Scotty McCreary's success too. Remember when Scotty's album hit number one on the Billboard charts? Corey was low-key celebrating, hinting that he had a slice of that success pie. And then there's Justin Bieber's album, Believe, which also soared to the top, thanks in part to Corey's behind the scenes mojo. Now, let's talk about Corey's impact on the Beebs himself. When Corey stepped in as Justin's tour manager in 2014, things got interesting. Some say Justin's struggles with substance use coincided with Corey's close management. Coincidence or not, it's definitely got people talking. Oh, and remember Selena Gomez? Yeah, she was singing Corey's praises back in 2011, urging fans to follow him on social media. And there's speculation that Corey's ties to Scooter Braun landed Kris Jenner a cameo in Ariana Grande's Thank You Next music video. Then we've got the unexpected friendship between Corey and Ellen DeGeneres, along with her wife, Portia. Despite Ellen's controversies, Corey's still riding the friendship train with them. Now let's talk jets. Corey's no stranger to luxury travel, often flaunting pics of himself on private jets that look suspiciously like P. Diddy's. Coincidence? Doubt it. With Corey's ties to Diddy and the music scene, it's all starting to click. But hold on to your seats because things are about to get even more intriguing. Corey's tight with a Russian-Canadian billionaire named Alex Schneider. This guy's not just your average rich dude, he's got fingers in all sorts of pies, including real estate and investments. But here's where it gets juicy. Schneider's been linked to some shady financial dealings with none other oh, That man looks like a Schneider for real. than Trump. Yeah, you heard that right. Switching gears, let's talk country music. Corey's buds with none other than Billy Ray Cyrus, AKA Miley's dad. Their friendship goes way back back even before Corey met Kris Jenner. And speaking of Chris, she and Corey were all about those double dates with power couple Babyface and his wife, Nicole. If you're not familiar with Babyface, he's a big deal in the music biz and he's tight with, you guessed it, P. Diddy. Now, onto the Chris and Corey love story or lack thereof. Rumor has it they met at a lavish yacht party in Ibiza thrown by none other than Kanye West. But here's the thing, people are not buying the whole lovey-dovey act. Call me a skeptic, but their body language screams security detail more than power couple. And 100%. let's not forget the family drama. While the Kardashian Jenner gals seem to welcome Corey with open arms, some of the clan's men aren't exactly thrilled about him. Kanye's been sounding the alarm about Corey for ages, warning everyone about his shady character. In fact, Kanye's even banned Corey from being around his own kids. So Kanye isn't holding back. He's straight up accused Corey of being a CIA plant. Yeah, you heard that right. According to Kanye, Corey's not to be trusted, and he's even called him out as a puff daddy nanny nanny. And it's not just Kanye who's 
skeptical. Scott Disick has voiced his concerns too, especially about Corey's shady past and his lightning fast relationship with Kris Jenner. Things came to a head when Corey made a disturbing threat to physically discipline Scott's daughter, Penelope, at a family dinner. Scott wasn't oh, having snap. it, and honestly, who can blame him? But here's where it gets even crazier. After Donald was elected president in 2016, Bro, ain't, ain't no other dude placing their hands on my daughter. You're bugging. We gonna have to really throw the hands. For Kanye and Corey jetted off to NYC to personally congratulate him. Yep, that's right. Corey's rubbing elbows with government bigwigs now, and it's got tongues wagging. Now let's talk lawsuits with P Diddy in the hot seat. We need to get into the new if evidence. Gonna get dragged into the mess. After all, he's been by Diddy's side through thick and thin, and some say he's the Kardashians' secret weapon. A real life Olivia Pope of Calabasas. But hey, not everyone's buying it. Some think Corey's just an opportunist riding the Kardashian wave for his own gain. Whatever the truth is, one thing's for sure. There's a lot more to this story than meets the eye. Remember when Kanye escaped to his Wyoming ranch and went on that Twitter rant accusing Kim and Chris of trying to lock him up? Yeah, well, he didn't forget to throw Corey into the mix, calling him out for not being allowed near his kids. And let's not forget that time Corey casually mentioned he'd spank Scott and Courtney's daughter if she scratched him. But it gets weirder. Fans have been buzzing about Corey's strange obsession with Kylie Jenner. Seriously, he's been caught giving her some seriously intense looks. Right in the center. I'm gonna put just like glittery pink in the middle. And if our mom expects Honestly, any commission on good. This, she should have been here. And Kanye? He's been on to Corey's sketchy vibe since 2019, when he texted Corey some pretty harsh stuff about never meeting his family. And let's talk about that Instagram post Kanye dropped in 2022. He straight up called Corey godless and hinted at his shady past, implying he's some kind of paid handler. Oh, and he threw in a nice little jab about Corey getting Kim linked with the liberals. God has a plan to remove the godless Corey needed to never be here anyway. I think he's a nice person. Not a great person, a nice person who used to be around Puff's family, then got around Justin Bieber. And then when Chris got divorced, he slid in. Now, I know what you're thinking. Kanye's always saying wild stuff, right? But what if he's onto something? What if Corey really is working for the government or some shady corporation like DuPont? Kanye's been Bro, right. I think, I think if anyone would know, it would be Kanye because he's been around him. Before, so who's to say he's not onto something this time? Now, let's talk about Corey's shady background. Good luck trying to find info about him online. No Wikipedia page, nada. It's like he's a ghost, but according to Cosmopolitan, Corey studied business marketing at Morehouse College in Atlanta and started working at Scooter Braun's company, SB Projects, after graduation. But here's where it gets sketchy. Corey's only seven months older than Scooter, who founded SB Projects when he was 26. So either Corey graduated late or he was doing something else before he joined the entertainment biz. And don't even get me started on his LinkedIn profile. It's suspiciously empty. So what's the deal with Corey Gamble? Is he just Kris Jenner's boyfriend or is there more to him than meets the eye? Kanye seems to think he's CIA and honestly, with all these connections, it's not hard to see why. Corey Gamble's ties to Diddy run deep and it seems like he's been in Diddy's employ for quite some time. From what we've gathered, Corey's role might be more than just a mere acquaintance. He could be a key player in Diddy's inner circle, tasked with handling sensitive situations situations and ensuring the loyalty of those close to Diddy, like Justin Bieber. So, Usher's story starts with him being signed super young and sent to live with Diddy in New York to get that edgy image going. But turns out Usher saw some sketchy stuff at Diddy's place. Moved to New York City and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing adds to the drama. Like, was he really hired to keep Justin under control? So picture this. There's this buzz in the air about a possible track by Justin Bieber dropping some heavy hints about Diddy. Yeah, the Diddy. People are scratching their heads, wondering if it's legit or just another AI-generated long. Now he's running around like he's Kylie's daddy, but let's be real, there's more to it than meets the eye. See, Corey's not just there for kicks. Nah, he's playing the long game, working his way into the inner circle to control the power dynamics of that famous family. And let me tell you, it's not all sunshine and rainbows with this guy. Remember Cherie, Corey's ex? She spilled some tea on him and it's not pretty. She's out here calling him violent, talking about how he got all kinds of nasty when their relationship hit the rocks. And let's not forget the stalking allegations. Cherie even had to slap an order of protection on him to keep him at bay. In an interview with the Daily Mail, Cherie didn't hold back, expressing doubts about her ex's intentions with Kris Jenner. According to her, Gamble is just a social climber, uh, using the reality TV to boost his own status.
onto I something. I mean, if he's cozying up to the Kardashians, he's probably rolling in dough by now. But does that mean he's off the hook for being violent? Not so fast. But hold up, because here's where things get even juicier. Corey was also tight with Kim Porter going way back. You might remember Kim Porter, Diddy's ex, who left us under some mysterious circumstances. Corey's been in the mix since forever, even there at Kim's place when she passed. Now that's raising some eyebrows. Diddy's been accused of being the one behind Kim's death since forever. I mean, the signs were all there. Now Kim Porter's friend Sahara Lottie spilled some major tea on a podcast, and let me tell you, it's juicy. She straight up said her relationship with Diddy was toxic AF. Like, imagine a dark, twisted roller coaster that never ends. Sahara even thinks Kim's death was like a spiritual sacrifice for Diddy. Sarah, wow. um, it wouldn't let us, and then the security guard eventually the next day like apologized and whatever to me. But I was like, it was her house. And all of a sudden you realize it's actually not right. her house. Does that make sense? Like it was like mm -hmm. he had her whole life on lock. And then for the let's rewind to the 90s when Kim and Diddy first got together. Kim was doing her thing, working with Andre Harrell at Uptown Records, and that's where she crossed paths with P. Diddy. They were together for over two decades, but it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Sahara spilled the tea that Diddy had Kim locked down tight. He was out there cheating left, right, and center, but whenever Kim tried to bounce, he'd pull her right back in. Poor Kim couldn't catch a break. Even when she tried to move on, Diddy was like, nah, not happening. But get this, Kim was a ride or die mom. She had three kids with Diddy, plus Diddy adopted her oldest son from another relationship. She tried to keep it together for the family, but it was taking a toll. Emotionally and spiritually, she was drained. So did you talk to her about it? Oh yeah, we talk, it's all, we, we talk about it all the time. See, well, Kim was very generally a private person, but we just became really fast friends. And we just, we connected. She was also really deep, spiritual, had like a, a, a deep- So picture this. Every time Kim tried to distance herself from Diddy, he was like a clingy ex who just wouldn't let go. Seriously, the guy was relentless. Even when they weren't officially together anymore, he was blowing up her phone like it was his job. She honestly felt like she was gonna be destitute because that's how much he had broken right. her down. Kim died of pneumonia at 47 years old in 2018. So we don't know exactly what she would say about this moment and the trouble. Another singer. And <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, just the fact that he wouldn't let his let her just go is alarming in itself. That is very alarming. Singer said, "Hey, why are Rachel dead? Like some shit went down." Bruh, we're still gonna need to get more information, but. <sighs> We understand, well, you guys probably don't understand. Let me put you on. You guys can look up uh, Monarch uh, Mind Control Programming. That's something that the CIA do. They actually did like multiple testings on people to mind control people just through trauma. So mind control is actually real. It has been tested through uh, with the CIA. And now it's a whole nother thing. Like when you're dealing with dark magic, spiritual things, that like you can put things over individuals that you seriously want to control. Like it's known as voodoo or like people putting like hexes over other people. It, it, get, it gets really crazy when you have this like extreme desire to control someone. And that right there, what she was saying, that that is very, very weird that she responded with Kimberly down. It's almost as if Kimberly like is no longer living in this body right now. You get what I'm saying? And then the next day she she her life is taken. Oh my God, yeah. seriously? Whoa. So, honestly, I mean, Vanessa, what I thought it was like, this is like a spiritual death, like some shit went down. Like I felt like whatever weird shit was in him. Sahara picked up on something eerie, noticing a major shift in Kim's energy, like something dark had latched onto her. But then in a tragic turn of events, Kim was suddenly gone, succumbing to pneumonia out of nowhere. It was all out of the blue, leaving everyone shocked and puzzled. Um, when Kim's mom passed, like she was so devastated when her mom passed that it's like that was her that was her life force, if that makes sense. Now, here's the kicker. Despite all the suspicion swirling around, Sahara doesn't believe Diddy had a hand in Kim's death. I hate to say this, but like when she passed, man, I felt relief for her. I felt Damn. relief. Damn, that's crazy. Because she was away from him. Because she was away from him. 
and she could kind of like guide her daughters. Her got her daughters like spinning images of her, and like they have her fire. They're Sagittarius, is they don't give a fuck. So what really happened to Kim Porter? Porter's passing shook so many of us, leaving us with more questions than answers. According to NBC News, she passed away unexpectedly in November 2018, slipping away in her sleep due to a lung infection. It all started with just a little sore throat, but then things got serious real quick. Her health went on a wild ride, with her temperature shooting up to a scary 102 degrees before suddenly dropping back down to 96. It was like a roller coaster nobody wanted to ride. Despite everyone's best efforts, Porter was tragically found unresponsive the next day. The official report from the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner Coroner said it was lobar pneumonia that took her life, marking it as natural causes. But not everyone is buying the whole pneumonia story. People are raising eyebrows, especially considering that the coroner handling the case passed away just a few weeks into the investigation. Coincidence? Seems fishy to me. Now here's the kicker. That same coroner found some potentially sketchy stuff in Kim's body during the autopsy. And let's be real, there's always been tension between those two, physically speaking. But Kim wasn't one to take any of Diddy's nonsense lying down. If he laid a hand on her, she'd give it right back to him. Back then, the coroner hinted that Kim's passing needed further investigation. But then, out of the blue, he gets replaced by a new coroner. And guess what? The new guy never even mentioned those toxins found in Kim's body. Smells like a cover-up, if you ask me. Now with Corey, being by Diddy's side and being involved in so many shady dealings, it's not so far off that he could have had something to do with Kim's passing too. But if Diddy goes down, does Corey go with him? And if Corey's implicated, does that mean the Kardashians are next in line for the fallout? It's like a game of Hollywood dominoes, and I'm here for the drama. Let us know what you think, and don't forget to watch the next video too. Hey, what I found about the craziest thing when it comes to like Corey Gamble being involved, this is the fact that he was there at the house the day she had passed away, which is, which that, I feel like that also raises a red flag. I feel like everything about this situation is red flags being raised for real. But comment down below what you guys think about this whole situation and any opinions that you have. Smash that like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I'm going to catch you guys in the next.